Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Sarah Foster who's a senior seed analyst with 2020 Seed Labs and we're going to be doing an episode of Wheat School talking about what seed quality is looking like going into 2025, coming out of the 2024 season and we're going to be talking about pathogens in seeds and just kind of germination, the whole, the whole bit when it comes to seeds. So welcome Sarah, it's great to see you again. You too, Amber. Thank you. I'm absolutely delighted to be a part of Real Ag's Wheat School. Um, we're standing in the germination lab this morning. This is a typical Monday morning. So last year, uh, in 2024, so the 2024 season, mm -hmm. uh, quality was good. I mean, there's obviously areas that it's not quite so good, where we saw... Um, drought towards the end of the growing season and so seed weights have come in a little lower but it's not impacting germination at all. Um, areas that were wet um, towards the latter part of the growing season we've seen some fusarium infection and um, that's of course always something that we see with wheat and durum and again it's region specific depending on environmental conditions and inoculum you know that's either in the soil or in other parts of uh, of crops um, adjacent to what you're growing mm -hmm. um, so with wheat germination is very very important a grower has to have his wheat tested before he can sell it um, and also it's part of the grading system so as a registered seed establishment they would do the purity part and we're a registered or accredited laboratory we do the germination that goes with that piece and they can then with that they can grade their seed would you recommend that a grower look at those germination numbers in order to help determine what they're going like what their seeding rates going to be Yes, um, so with a germination, it's tested and grown at optimum conditions. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is giving the seed its best chance to grow, uh, which is good mm -hmm. because we get to see what that seed's capable of doing um, within an optimum condition. So if there is an issue, we will pick it up, um, but we're likely to pick up more damaging issues, if you like, in a vigor test, which is done at temperatures that are a lot lower than a germination. So a germination on a cereal or a wheat can be done at a constant 20 or at 15, 25, where it's at 25 degrees for 16 hours of the day and 15 degrees at eight hours of the day, of the day with light on and off emulating day and night. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's dive into pathogens a little. So what are some of the pathogens that you were seeing were quite common in 24? What are you expecting from 25? Well, in 2024, um, we saw quite a bit of Fusarium graminiarum. About 10% of our samples that are coming in are testing with Fusarium, um, with an average of about 1.5% infection. And um, there are other pathogens that we test for. Um, the other main one being root rot. There are others, but mm -hmm. those are the two main ones that I would say show up more frequently. And if growers are getting their lab results back and realizing, hey, these are issues, what would you recommend? Well, if the quality's there and there is an infection mm -hmm. of Fusarium graminiarum, which can impact quality to a certain extent, we always say, get it treated. Um, that's your best prevention in terms of spread and getting your seed out of the ground more healthy than without treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really is important for growers to be looking at those tests because from the sounds of it, whether it's seeding rates or knowing you know, maybe that you're gonna have to plan to do some fungicides or you know, just for planning for the season. Absolutely. Um, the report that we put out is 
quite extensive actually. I mean, obviously there's a number attached to mm -hmm. it, um, which is your germination number. But if you look into the remarks section, for example, there'll be things like, you know, if it was, say, 90% germination, what happened to the other 10%? Uh, were they abnormal and why were they abnormal? Right. Was it frost damage? Was it mechanical damage? Was it chemical damage? Um, is it dormant? And when we started the season, we did see quite a bit of dormancy, which we have to break. Mm -hmm. um, so, because we have to get the optimum or maximum germination potential out of the sample. So always go to the report and see what we're saying about looking at all the other, you know, symptoms that could be factoring into what's basically affecting the sea quality. Mm -hmm. That's great. And any words of encouragement for growers as we go into the ne next season here? We're going to be hitting planting before we know it. I know. I mean, it's not far away. Um, I think if you haven't had your seed tested already, definitely get it tested. If it's been conditioned or it's had any kind of seed treatment done, get it tested again to make sure that it's strong mm -hmm. and you want to be strong going in and we we don't know what weather conditions are going to be like um, you know going into the spring so um, I think as long as you have a good strong start that's the main thing that's incredible well thank you so much and that was Sarah Foster on Wheat School